we finally know the contents of Wafula Chebukati's sworn affidavit, and he is leaving no stones unturned and no stories untold. In his sworn affidavit, Wafula Chebukati declares the following, that on the 15th of August, 10 a.m., a team from the National Security Advisory Committee had gone to see him. Who are these four? The Vice Chief of Defense Forces, Lieutenant General Francis Ogola, the Inspector General of Police, Hilary Mutiambai, the Solicitor General, Kennedy Ogeto, and Principal Administrative Secretary in the Office of the President, Kennedy Kihara. He states that they cautioned him not to announce William Ruto as President-elect, and they demanded that rather than declaring Ruto as winner, he simply states that no one met the 50% plus one threshold, thus forcing a rerun. So you now understand why Hilary Mutiambai left the country. You remember we did a video on that and we were speculating maybe it's health, maybe it's uh, a number of reasons. But at the time I did not know that he had been mentioned in Wafula Chibukati's sworn affidavit and I think he got ahead of this by leaving the country. Because had he not left and this affidavit gets to the Supreme Court, which it has, the Supreme Court justices would have subpoenaed him and ordered him to appear before the justices. And maybe he doesn't want this, so... He left the country under the guise of Medicare. Now that is really smart because there are some exceptions whereby if a judge has ordered you to appear before them, they can express leniency if it's an issue of Medicare. You know, you can't be going for chemotherapy and a judge orders you to appear in court, so it's not possible. Now Wafula Chebukati goes on to state that Juliana Cherera demanded that 233,000 211 votes be removed from Ruto's tally and added to the rejected votes in order to force a rerun. Then Chebukati goes on to state that on 3 a.m. he was visited by Tuju, Amos Wako, and Chalo Mbobu. And Tuju insisted that Chebukati alter the votes in Raila's favor and he would be adequately rewarded. Now what do we learn from this chain of events? Number one, the deep state fell victim to the trap of assumption. It is my personal belief that many Kenyans in this country hold the belief that in every general election, Raila Odinga's votes are stolen. And even the deep state bought into this analogy. So what was their focal point? They simply focused on ensuring the election is clean and fair. And that is why you saw the Venezuelans being uh, harassed at the JKIA. Why are you having this IBC materials and an investigation was done into that. It didn't go anywhere. When the servers are being moved, they are on it. So... They were simply trying to ensure that the election was free and fair simply because they believed that no one can defeat Raila Odinga in a clean election. So the moment the Form 34As started streaming in and the math started adding up, that is when they panicked. They realized, hey, this guy cannot meet the 50% plus one. And that is why you're seeing they visited Wafula Chebukati at 3 a.m. to join that delegation. He failed. They then sent in uh, Hilary Mutiambai and his group, and they also failed. So the deep state fell victim to the trap of assumption. The second thing that we learned from this sworn affidavit by Wafula Chibukati is that we now know what the deep state consists of. We know that it has political brokers like Rafael Tuju, the upper echelon of the National Police Service, a small faction of the military, and the office of the president, because that is the delegation that came in next after Rafael Tuju and Amos Wako failed at 3 a.m. in the morning. So what does this really tell us? This tells us that you should never, ever water down this victory by William Samoy Ruto. You are literally witnessing a David versus Goliath moment in your very lifetime. Can you imagine the military, the office of the president, the National Police Service, all of these people, including the Solicitor General and other political bigwigs, the former Attorney General Amos Wako and all these people, and still William Ruto managed to win the election. He could have lost it at 3 a.m. You do realize that. If Wafula Chebukati and Rafael Tuju had struck a deal, it would have been over. Raila Odinga would have been declared. William Ruto would now be the one headed into the Supreme Court to attack Raila Odinga's position. And that's always a terrible position to be in. And that is where Raila Odinga is right now. He's going to the Supreme Court to try and fight off a William Ruto presidency at a moment when over 50 nations worldwide have congratulated President-elect William Ruto. So that's a really tall order. And no one really wants to be in such a position after 
a general election has been concluded. And by the way, it's very possible that the same way Ofula Chibukati was receiving delegations and offers of bribery at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and even during the day, it is the very same way that these seven justices at the Supreme Court could be getting wood by the political brokers in the country, by, the, by those in areas of influence. I won't be shocked if a justice is offered a couple of billions. You don't buy the presidential seat with millions. I believe it's billions. So I believe there's a lot of that that's happening behind the scenes. And if not now, perhaps as the proceedings get in motion at the Supreme Court, uh, maybe at that point it might become more dominant. Will they have the courage to say no like Wafula Chebukati? I don't know. Time will tell. Now I'd really like to hear from you, so just leave me a comment in the comment section below. Do you think Wafula Chebukati's uh, affidavit really does damage to some of these political bigwigs? And does it give him and the president-elect William Samoy Ruto any political mileage or judicial mileage for, for that matter in the Supreme Court? Just leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to respond to as many as possible. And if you're here for the first time, just hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula. I'll be the first one to pop up, hit the subscribe button, and you're going to be getting a ton more content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Do have yourselves a great day. Adios.